Hey everyone, Soundwave84 here with another Transformer Siege review. In this review, we'll be looking at Starscream. And here was another lucky pickup at Walmart in the wrong aisle. I'll have a video of On the Hunt coming out that shows how I found these guys. Um, but yeah, this is Starscream. And I'm just going to right off the bat saying this one has some QC issues. And I'll get to that. Mainly, it's this chest piece here. It wants to right off all the time and also his face you probably can tell it's like he's got an extra shadow no he's got a little bit too much black paint going up on his cheek and this one's got a little happy with the brush there it's not it's noticeable on camera when you look at him this way but actually in person i'm just looking at him i don't really notice it that much because i didn't notice in the packaging but honestly i didn't really look that hard but yeah but overall he is a nice representation of Starscream. I will also say this is probably the uh, I don't say disappointment. He's probably the most lackluster so far of any Decepticon we've gotten from the Siege line. I'll probably say Soundwave and Shockwave are tops. Megatron is right below, followed by Skytread and then Starscream. Now he looks fine. Looks fine. Even feels fine. But just compared to what we've gotten he just feels a little underwhelming. But he's still an excellent figure. I think a lot of his, a lot of the joints of mine are tight. This is some QC problems is going on, like so the chest piece and this, the paint on his face, and maybe he's just a little bit overly detailed for me. I'm not big on too much detail, but he's got lots of it going on here. But like I say, overall he's an excellent representation of Starscream, though. A lot better than what we got with the Power of the Primes. I'll show those comparisons in a minute. Honestly, this figure here makes me excited for Thundercracker. And eventually, I know we probably will get a sky warp. And I would like to see this mold done in the sunstorm. I like to re get the seekers, all of them, like we did when we had the old uh, generations and everything, like this. Because we were able to get all these seekers. We have acid storm and all of them. I would like to be able to, them to, I like for them to do that with these. Because these are actually really well done. So we'll go ahead and just show off the comparison here with the beast of this. Now this is bigger, it's also crappier. So, uh, this looked okay, except, you know, this part did the torso here it looked fine. It's just, when you got to the big puffy marshmallow Pat Lee style feet and hands, is it threw it off. Whereas he's very G1-esque. He's got the right kind of canopy chest piece going on that he does not, and it just... He looks a whole lot better. Head skull's better. Uh, everything's just better. So we'll just get this piece of crap out of my view. And we'll show them off with the older one. This is the one that came out. Not the first one. The first one was gray, like the star screen. And they came out with this one, which was a little more cartoon correct, I guess. Where he's more of a white color. Now these are all nice in scale, but they're just too small to go with anything current. Which where this star screen here will now fit in. Now the jet modes in these are excellent, and I wouldn't miss, I would still keep all these. I'll just transfer them all to a jet mode and leave them that way. Put them down. And we'll take a look at Starscream's head sculpt. Like I said, it's really, really well done. It's just uh, the extra paint there. I mean, he looks sad, though. That's probably my biggest complaint on Starscream. I think it's what throws it off. He should have a smirk. They should have sculpted him with a smirk. Uh, I, they should, I know they all be the same face spot for every single Seeker, Thundercracker, and Skywarp. What they should have done, I know, is money. Is just remold a new head for each character. Starscream gets a smirk. I say maybe Thundercracker should get this face, and then Skywarp should get... He could do with a smirk of that, or a happy face, or a mean face, or something. Like that. I think he just looks too sad for Starscream. That's just my opinion. You could see a different look and an expression in the face than I do. So, the blue on camera, uh, it's more of a, it's a light blue, like a sky blue. Uh, it's really nice. The battle damage is all over him uh, a lot. Uh, like I said, I'm not big on the battle damage. I like it to be more clean. But I see what they're going for, and it's fine. I like the wings in the back. They yeah, still have the 
Silicon logo is there, but also for when he's actually in his Tetra Jet mode, it's also back there. And even the back cleans up well. And it even filled in something they could have left hollow back here for his transformation with a springy bit. So it fills in the, the gap so it doesn't look bad. And that's, that's excellent. Very well done, Hasbro. Now, articulation, he's got a high up dice swivel. Tall piece here will move for his legs to go out. Da, 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 da. Uh, you can go back, not too far because there's a big piece in the back. Uh, we can go out to the side and you can see right here. His joints are really stiff, so it looks like I'm having a problem. I kind of am. Yeah, elbow, his uh, knee bends go deep. You can probably even stick a flight stand up in his uh, piece there. So you can have him kind of flying. He's got ankle tilts. Excellent. There's no rock, but you can move his feet and finagle his heel spur or his foot to get another kind of feet poses going on. He does have a waist swivel. It does not go as far because of the big backpack. Because the whole front of the jet, first whole jet hangs off the back. You can get to about there, but still, it's something. I mean, even the deluxe generations line did not have a waist swivel. It does have a wrist, a wrist swivel, but it's on a mushroom peg, and sometimes I keep swiveling. I'll, the the hand just comes out. Also, if you swivel too hard this way, that's how this piece opens to fold his hand in for transformation. And of course, he's got his arm. Cannons, shoulders can. We'll be able to 360 around, but you know there's this wing here, but you can move it back, so you can get that full swivel going on. He's kind of got like a butterfly joint here, so you can get even extra poses this way. That's my turn, Megatron. My turn. I'm the new leader. Megatron sneezed. I'm the leader now. Let's see, so you get extra poses there. Shoulders stiff but go out to there elbows can fold all the way up almost to the shoulder you do get a 360 head spin and he does have a light piping as you saw there it's got a rock side to side a decent down a slight up it's not like sound wave get some light piping going on it's pretty good gotta aim them just right so the wings also can go back and forth. And I just realized I've wasted like seven minutes going over articulation and paint. So let's get down to the transformation. We're going to take his arm cannons out. Which you can also hold in his hand if you would rather him do that. I know he's done that in a couple episodes of the cartoon. Skywarp, some of us think did it too. Alright, so transform him. We want to open his hands up. Forearms. These will rotate in. Let's close it back up. Same on the other side. Close it back up. Now we want to, I believe we want to turn this way. Now he's got this hollow bus here, which will actually go up and over his, he's got this double jointed like elbow here. So you can get it like this, and this folds up. And just collapses that way. And when you get him out of the package, he comes like this with his hands out. So like he's got short, stubby arms. You just got to pull him down. All right, so the next thing you want to do is these pieces here will untab from his back. See, there's tab. And then you can bring him down a little bit. There's a silver piece, gray piece here that you need to get out of here. Keep it on camera. Put it behind his head. Pull his head down and into this little gap here. I'm going to go ahead and 180 his waist around. Okay, these pieces you just pull down will now come down and around and they will tab into each other to form the front of the jet. As you can see, these big, mighty tabs right there it will just tab. Now you want to take his feet, fold the heel spurs in, 
collapse the blue foot over it. Now this piece here, you need to raise up. This is where my QC issue comes in. This side here wants to constantly pop off with any kind of force, and it is tight hinges. But hopefully with my repeated movement, I've got it a little bit loose. So bring that all the way up. Now you will take his feet. That's where this comes in. Now his legs will just fold up. These little like tabs here will go into his back of his well, into his butt. Pretty much we'll just and we'll just bring that in and we'll tabs into his butt. And there you go. And then you take his arms. You see these little slots here? It will tab over all this. So what you want to do is you fold this down, line that up, tab it in, same on the other side, tab it in. Now you want to take this piece here, just bring it down, and this will fold down, it tabs twice. There's this piece, see on top here there's these three holes, it will catch into this, and this piece here has this little extra dip, you can see on this one better will catch underneath the nose cone. So we'll get this down. So we'll get that up and under there. Then we'll push this into his arms. So I want to hold his hand here. And this will tab in. And just do the same on that side. Now that side there doesn't tab as well as this side does into his arm. Let's see, I don't want a nice click. Got him back. And there's his head. What you want to do is hide that. So you see there's these gray tabs. And there are slots down here. You want to bring this up. And should have a, a hinge. I got a tight hinge. Bring it up. Tab it in. Take this piece here. You just want to bring it down. And then you want to get that behind. Sorry, get on video. You want to get this piece down here behind the chest piece. Then this will just tap in. Then you take his shoulder guns, cannons. Now you can pick them back into his arms or underneath the jet. I'm going to choose underneath the jet on the wings. And there you go. Yeah, people want to complain about the chest is sitting there off the back. It looks kind of weird. They still got thrusters. You can just pretend these are extra thrusters. Garbage chutes, whatever. But it's excellent mode, especially over the top view. It's beautiful. Almost kind of reminds me of something off Star Wars looking at it. Of course, this, this is G1. This is based off the more meets the eye Tetrajets when they're attacking uh, Willjack and Bumblebee. So I can't wait for them to make more. I like for them to just. Throughout this entire War for Cybertron trilogy, just keep pumping out some seekers, man. Just keep throwing these seekers out, and uh, I think that would be beautiful. Alright, I want to get this guy into here. Let's just look at it for a second. He's got some battle damage here on his nose, kind of, and on the wings. Looks as if like he played in mud or something. But it is a nice looking thing. The paint is beautiful. But the red's paint looks beautiful. The blue is paint. The battle damage is all paint. Now we'll just get this guy back into route mode. Just reverse all steps. On, we'll want to pull out his cannons. Pull this piece out here. Raise it back up and over. Pull this piece back off. See how it comes on. That's there. We want to take his wings out of his arms. Raise it back up. And tab his arms and his legs. Then you can untab the legs from his butt. Pull them down. Pull this piece down. Pull this out. Go ahead and you go ahead and uh, swivel his waist the 180 around. To get him facing the right way. And go ahead and do his feet. Pull these out. Pull his heel spurs back. Pull his arms all the way to the back. And you can bring this down and tab it in. And bring 
his head up. And lower this great piece back down while keeping his head up. I am trying my best. There we go. Then you go ahead and pull his arms down. Take this piece here. We're going to split it. <clears throat> Raise it up on the sides. No slots here. We'll just go on the tabs back here. So raise it all up. Lower this down. The little hinge back here to get it lined up. And then you just want to tab them in. And then you open his hands up. Pull it out of his hands. Close it back. And voila, you are done with the scream. Then you take his arm cannons, put them back in. Arm cannons. There you go. And Starscream's weapons, I didn't even see what they called them. They call them no ray laser launchers, so that's good. And they actually call it no rays. I was wondering if they did or not. Also, HPI is the initials they give it. And it is beautiful. Now, I have a shot here at the end of the video lining up all the Decepticons minus Sky Trek because he's not in this room with me, but the main ones Shockwave, Soundwave, Megatron, and Starscream. So, he's an excellent station of Starscream, a lot better than Power of the Primes. I mean, that's easily done. But he's even, I would say he's better than the Chug version, just based because he scales properly with Megatron. Beautiful. Anyway, I said thanks for watching. Until the next one, peace out.